In 2015, Riot Games released a new patch of League of Legends featuring significant buffs to the champion Skarner. This would go on to give Skarner one of the highest all-time win rates in the game, at one point reaching an almost 70% win rate, causing players to create a celebratory posts to announce that they actually won a game against Skarner. 48 hours later, Riot would announce a hotfix to nerf the champion. And that was the last time anyone ever cared about Skarner. But sometimes, they add entire features to the game so poorly received that they actually do have to admit they were wrong. Today we look at the features and changes made that lasted the least amount of time within the game. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by Porofessor. Porofessor is a companion app for League of Legends that will help you improve in your future games. The app automatically provides you with the correct runes and item builds for whichever champion you select. At the same time, giving you details on your teammates and opponents during the loading screen. And then in-game, you have an overlay letting you know how your performance is going, jungle and inhibitor timers on the map, and among other things, the enemy spell tracker. Click the spell you just saw be used, and now you have a more or less accurate cooldown of that spell. In general, if you're ready to start improving in your future games, click the first link in the description and download Porofessor today. Getting things started, the Chemtech Dragon. On October 7th, 2021, Riot revealed changes for the upcoming season. This included two brand new dragon objectives, the Hextech Dragon and the Chemtech Dragon, the topic of discussion. This brought two new elements to the game. One, the Chemtech map. If you were to have the Chemtech soul in your game, your map would change accordingly and create what Riot called camouflage zones where players could not be seen by opponents unless they're right there with them. Regular wards would provide no vision on the map. But whatever, it's on both sides, so it's somewhat balanced. The issue became bigger, however, when it was combined with the ability of the Chemtech Soul. The team who obtains this soul would receive a passive similar to Scions. Upon dying, you will briefly revive and have one last chance to fight for a couple of seconds. It doesn't take a lot of thought to think that this might be too overpowered and initial reactions to the announcement seem to feel the same way. When you die, you'll enter a zombie state, where you can still cast abilities and continue fighting when you'd normally be looking at a gray screen. Where you can still I don't know about this! They're die, kind of trolling! You'll enter a Three months later, on January 24th, 2022, Riot announced that they would be removing the Chemtech Dragon from the game, admitting that it wasn't a success, stating, over the past few months, we've heard your feedback around social media and surveys that even with this goal in mind, the Chemtech edition has just been too frustrating to play with, especially if you're on the losing team. To give you a perspective on how the player base felt about this dragon, the post announcing the official removal received 26,000 upvotes. However, as you may be aware, the Chemtech Dragon was added back into the game in preseason of 2023, though it only returned in name. It's completely different now as most Dragon Souls are also more tame now in general. But when it comes down to the original Chemtech Dragon, it was only in the game for a total of 69 days. Next, we go back in time to 2019 for a feature that lasted even less time within the game. On January 17th, 2019, Riot announced the Position Rank System. This would replace the current rank system and make it so that each role you queue for has its own independent rank. Now, this is one of those ideas that if you think about it for a minute, it sounds amazing. However, society tends to ruin good ideas. Because what would end up happening is, let's say you main mid lane. Well, you're gonna always try your best when you're playing mid. But suddenly, you get autofilled support, your least favorite role, and you play without actually caring if you win or lose. You may even pick a troll champion to make sure your team surrenders. And that, in simple terms, is basically what was the biggest issue with the idea. And overall, players didn't like it. Oh my shit system, shit system! Take it out! No one cares! They won't swap me the role and I have to f play for a role I don't care about, man! On March 13th, 2019, the feature would be officially removed from the game. 
However, it should be mentioned that although this was a massive change to the rank system, in their announcement video, they did mention that they were open to rolling it back if it were to not be successful. But let me be real with you. We're open to rolling it back if things just don't work out. Having said that, we're excited for you to try it, and we're hoping it will be a hit. In the end, this feature was in the game for a total of 49 days. Since then, the idea has not been revisited again. On March 19th, 2019, Riot announced changes to ARAM, the other permanent game mode in the game. These changes included adding the ability to ban champions before the game starts, like in Draft or Ranked Summoner's Rift. However, by April 17th, 2019, Riot decided this was a mistake and they removed the feature. They said, Removing bans was a really tough decision that we discussed a lot internally. Bans provide a real feeling of satisfaction and reduce frustration by helping you feel like you're in control of your destiny, especially when you can remove that one champ you just don't want to face. But it also had some side effects. ARAM has always been the less competitive mode for players to enjoy League characters in a slightly more chill setting. But the bans were so targeted to a select group of champions that we saw an overall decrease in champion diversity. For players who wanted to reroll for those champs and didn't care about having a perfectly balanced experience, it now felt like they were never available. Our goal isn't to change what ARAM is to most players and the bans almost took away the whole purpose of it to them. Finally, it also adds another 30 seconds to getting into game time, which is something we want to keep quick for this game mode. However, the general reaction from the community was not a positive one, as you can see by the feelings expressed from Reddit user meme underscore lord 3. I couldn't come up with worse reasoning than that myself. The second sentence alone gives enough reason to bring bans back. And also, who the fuck cares if I have to wait an extra 30 seconds to get into game if I don't have to go against Vagar ever again. And well, this happened 4 years ago, and although they've teased potentially making ranked ARAM, the bans never returned. Meaning that this feature was literally in the game for about 27 to 28 days. But we at least got the stats of what champions players were banning the most. Things like Brand, Blitzcrank, Vagar, and Lux were generally the most banned. Although interestingly enough, the most popular banned champions differed by region. Brand was the most banned champion in every server, except he wasn't even top 10 in the Korean server. What does that mean? I am not sure. Surprisingly, it's hard to find more instances where Riot gave up on their features right away. In general, regardless of how poorly received something is, they'll usually let a feature or new item stick around for an entire season, at least to test things out. Mythic items is a good example. Since their introduction in 2021, people have been dissatisfied with them from the beginning. But just now, over two years later, Riot is saying they will no longer be in the game, after being in the game for over 600 days. But anyway, let me know of any similar stories you remember that I should have mentioned here today. As always, thank you for watching, take care.